Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today we've got the pleasure of watching Ray Dill from the European server playing in the Tier 9 Chinese Rocket Heavy. It is the BZ-68, and it looks like Ray Dill really loves this vehicle as they already have their third mark of excellence on this tank. Meaning they've probably got all the field mods unlocked, right? So they got it in peak performance. Ray Dill is going to show you exactly today why rockets in World of Tanks make all the difference. And they take the Chinese tanks that don't have exactly the best statistics in across all of the different aspects of the vehicle and they just allow them to do things that no other tanks, or at least no other heavy tanks can. And that is getting your vehicle quickly into position but just not getting into qu position quickly, and also having the opportunity to do some outrageous things to surprise your opponents. More on that in just a second. So, the BZ-68. This is one of the best performing tier nine heavy tanks in the game, and that's because it's got great frontal turret armor of 280, which not many people, well, not many tanks can challenge, and also the people playing those tanks can challenge even if they're loading gold. It also has a nice, meaty gun. This is a 130 millimeter caliber gun with 530 alpha damage on its rounds and 315 heat pen. And this is the big moment of the game. Look at this. Radil having the confidence with those rockets to literally just drive out in front of six vehicles. And the enemy team just didn't expect it. They didn't react to it. The STA-2 put a shot in, but that's just not simply enough. And this is by far the best part of the game for Raider, just making that decision, having that confidence to push across. And not just hanging in the valley where no enemy tanks were going to um, come and fight Raidil, and instead going and dealing with them in the base. Now Raidil is using this eight degrees of gun depression to just go hold down to use this real meaty turret. It doesn't matter if you have poor damage minute of 2,000. It doesn't really matter if you don't have the best accuracy of 0.42 or even the best gun handling, which Radial is quite rightly improving with vertical stabilizers on this tank, if you can just sit in front of your opponents and slowly grind them down. Now, of course, you've got to hope that the other flank isn't just going to get completely demolished, right? It's, it's not enough to just sit there and not deal significant amounts of damage to your opponents. In one of those games, it's going to be a horrendous snowball. You can see Radel's actually thinking about doing another crossing here, right? You can tell he's itching, he's looking, and he does it again. It's lovely. Is he going to get hit from the Conway? No, they just don't react. And that means that Radel can now finish off the artillery on the enemy team, picking up their third kill of the game. And within the first three minutes, having done 3,500 combined. And this is really why rockets are... Uh, I guess you could say they're OP, right? Rockets are OP. Or are they just really OP in the hands of bold, aggressive players? These tanks are perfect for everyone out there who just doesn't really give them monkeys. Or maybe more for the players out there who know how to use bursts of speed to their advantage. Crossing those short, no-man areas of the map can allow heavy tanks to just get into positions the enemy team just don't expect. Most heavy tanks in the game would slowly trundle across, get smashed by the 5120, and not have the hit points to risk when they're there. And even though Raydil gets clubbed by the gorilla at the back of the map, they've still got 1,200 hit points to play around with, as they are using a durability device in addition to the gun rammer. Bizarre to me that Raydil obviously really loves this vehicle, and they're going to have one of the, the best games uh, of the year, at least in my opinion, in a tier 9 heavy tank in this round. But they still haven't really invested in having some fancy fancy equipment in this tank but maybe for all i know radil has put it on the tier 10 right the bz75 the crown in the chinese rocket heavy tank crown or the line i should say the crown in the crown that would be good that'd be crownception right now the crown in the line of the uh, of the chinese heavy tanks so these rocket heavies when they went into the game i thought ah they're gonna be pretty good and they've ended up being pretty good did you know that Wargaming were actually considering putting derp guns like the BZ-176 on all of these Chinese rocket heavy tanks? Yeah, I think they were actually at one point planning on having, I think it was a 1,200 alpha or 1,400 alpha damage gun on the BZ-75 at tier 10. Although it wasn't going to have great penetration, so it probably wouldn't be as usable as the BZ-176. Although, when we think about it, the BZ-176 uh, has shown just how usable high explosive rounds are with good RNG and people with deep pockets. Talk about deep pockets, Radel doesn't really need them here. He's making some great use of these standard rounds to finish off the 5120 and now slowly start to grind through there 
TNH VZ51. And Ray Dill is up to nearly 8,000 combined in the first five minutes. They've literally put their team on their back right now and put the Lorraine back into the garage as well. I love the fact that using the wreck of the artillery here to cover their side against the pesky griller who put the round into them earlier. And there's some just absolute poetry going on that the tier 9 self-propelled gun that usually is the bane of all the heavy tanks and would be able to shut down Radial in this scenario is actually now providing them with that lovely bit of color. Or cover, even. Uh, as as Radal manages to put uh, a shell now into the top of the TNH VZ-51. These heat rounds, will they be able to go through the top of the turret? They did in the first one, they did on the second one, and that's it. And the only color we can really see here is, is Radal hugging the edge of the map, but they aren't a red liner in, in this kind of a scenario. They're hugging the edge of the map to be able to get the best angles on their opponents possible. So the Progetto looks like they've had enough. And can you believe that even though Radal has done like 9,000 combined in this game. Their team is still so far down on hit points. But a lovely HE pen there by the looks of it into the Progetto. Or maybe it was an... I have to rewind it. Was it an HE? I heard the intuition switch. Maybe it was Radial switching um, from heat to AP. Or was it from heat to HE? Well, we're going to have to find out in just a second. It was to AP, so a bit of a, a miscalculation there by me. That Progetto had three marks of excellence. And their three marks of excellence aren't going to help them in this game as they just got absolutely roasted with their lack of fire extinguisher, which a lot of the sweaty players will do, right? A lot of sweaty players don't believe in the fire extinguisher, myself included on my main account, at least I don't use fire extinguishers on any of my vehicles, to be able to give me that extra 5% advantage that I'll get from the 10% crew skill buff. What do you mean 5% advantage, QB? Well, that's because every 2% of crew skill that you improve your crew, pretty much all of the aspects of your tank get about 45 or 5% better, depending on the crew member. And so that's what I'm what I'm highlighting there. Man, this is now 11,500 combined when we saw that fire damage on the Progetto add up. And that Progetto is going to have to do more than lick their wounds to hopefully be able to get back into this game. Although I'm sure that Radal probably really doesn't want them to. And wow, with a few deaths on the enemy team over towards the east, this game is now no longer looking as close as it, as it was. Radal finally manages to just farm up the TNH VZ-51. And that's what this game is. But actually, look, that pesky Progetto that Radal left on about 10% of the hit points has now possibly got a flanking angle on a Gorilla. Or will they be able to make their way back to base? Luckily, it looks like the Skoda T-50 on their team, that's Proach, is going to make their way back just in case the Progetto decides to be a bit sneaky and try to spot. Radal is going to use an armor-piercing round here after a long, 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 long aim time to put one right into the side of that gorilla that managed to remove uh, about a third of their hit points earlier on in the battle. And with that shot, Radal now secures nine kills. They are one away from the pool's medal. Oh my word, Radal. Keep it up, man. This is this is one of the greatest games I've ever seen in any tier 9 tank. We're talking about over 9,000 damage dealt as well as 3,000 assistance and Radal not afraid to be at the front and just take it to the enemy team. If it wasn't for those rockets to cross the gaps in the hands of a very capable, knowledgeable and aggressive player, this game would have been completely lost. However, Radil has put the team on the back and now all they have to do is try and find a char 75 before their 252U caps out. And uh, I bet you Radil is actually happy now that they managed to get spotted here because that means... Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That is the 10th kill for Radil in just an ultimate tremendous carry here with over 12,000 combined for the BZ-68. This was a tier 9 tech tree tank having the kind of result that only tier 10s can even dream of. An incredible tour de force performance showing you exactly why the rockets on the back of these Chinese heavy tanks even though they don't have the most impressive statistics overall, these rockets just allow them to do things that no other vehicles in the game can. And it makes up for, should we say, their all-round statistical weakness compared to other heavies of their tier. So just a ridiculous game here. This was 2,228 base experience for a tier 9 tank. One of the highest base experiences I've seen for any tier 9. This is usually only achievable in tier 8 and below vehicles, but Radial just did so much. And even in a tech tree tank, 
absolutely bonkers. 9,800 damage dealt gets them a high caliber. They hit every single one of their 25 shots. They get a steel wall medal for blocking 4,000 damage, enough to destroy the tank a couple times over, and a pools medal for those 10 kills. And Radel still makes 15,000 credits after running out of armor piercing and being forced to fire their heat rounds. So the Chinese rocket heavies, at least the tech tree ones, are they all completely bonkers overpowered? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. They're definitely decent performers, but as we can see, at the tier 8, the tier 9, and the tier 10, they're actually lowering the win ratio of the average player that plays them. And when we take a look at the tier 10 tank, there's actually incredibly good players playing it, and they're not achieving the best win rates. So I guess for every situation where you end up being able to make the rockets work, there'll be another situation where they just don't really make up for the, uh, the statistical weakness at least holistically, of the vehicle. However, this is only with regards to the tech tree tanks. And of course, when we take a look at the BZ-176, which isn't statistically weaker compared to all of its tier eight heavy tank counterparts, but still has those added rockets, we can see what kind of monstrous results it brings. So the Chinese rocket tech tree, are they gonna be everybody's cup of tea? No. Should everybody go up the tech tree? Oh, definitely not. These are tanks for aggressive, knowledgeable players who know that using the rockets will allow them to dictate the battlefield by taking the most important positions. And unfortunately, unless you know those important positions, then you're probably going to underperform in the vehicles. But for those of you who do, these can be some of the most dangerous tanks in the game. So congratulations to you, Raydil, on one of the greatest games I've ever seen in a tier nine tank. Thank you so much for uploading it onto the What Re plays website for the community to enjoy when i saw this one i just knew i had to feature it and a big thank you for putting qb question mark in the title for getting my attention today and i really hope all of you out there enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think about the tech tree chinese rocket tanks inside the game have you played them did you like them did you hate them do you think they're broken and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon